Most applications that deal with graphics need to go beyond just having shapes with colors inside of them, and they need to have images in them. So in this video, we want to talk about how to include images in our graphical applications. Turns out that ScalaFX has a package called ScalaFX.scene.image. And it has the types that are associated with working with images in ScalaFX. And the key one of these is the image type. And the main ways that we're going to make images are to pass in URLs. Now you can specify a URL and then you can also specify information about how big you want the image to be when it's loaded in and it will automatically shrink it for you if you want it to. So I've copied our template here because we're going to be using a lot of stuff from it. It's probably nice to import the things from the image package. And we can demonstrate loading in an image is a new image. The simplest form of this would just load in the whole image. Now, the image needs to be specified as a URL. I happen to have a JPG, not PNG. I happen to have an image here called castle.jpg. And so if I specify that as my image, it'll run and pops up a window, but the image didn't do anything. In order to see the image, we need to add a something to our, uh, our, our scene. And in this case, the image view is a node it can either be passed a URL directly, in which case it will load it in and display that, or we can pass it an image. For obvious reasons, I went with the, uh, I'm going to go with the second version because I have an image here. So we'll make a new image view and we'll pass it the image and then content equals view. Okay. Now we can see what that looks like. This is actually a fairly large image that I happen to be using here. So there we go. The image view by default is sitting with its layout X and Y up at zero, zero. So it's uh, in the top left corner and then it just displays however much pops up in the window. Okay, so what else can we do with these images. We can put them inside of our an, an image view and make them appear in there. Another thing that's helpful to be able to do with images is the ability to read pixels from them and to write pixels to them. So what I want to do is I want to go through this image and be able to read out its pixels and then possibly change them in some way and then write that uh, back out to a new image. And in order to do this, we actually need some new types. So the first type is something called a pixel reader, which as the name implies, allows you to read pixels. So there's a pixel reader in here. How do we get hold of a pixel reader? Well, we can ask an image for its pixel reader. Now note that that gives us back an option of pixel reader. It is possible there are some uh, there are some types of images that you won't be able to read the pixels of. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to make a node and I'm going to do dot pixel reader and then I'm going to match on that because I want to see what happens uh, if I get a value or not. So there are some different options here. One is there's a case for none. In other words, 
whatever image type we loaded in, I feel fairly confident that in this case that's not going to be the situation, but we should check for it anyway. In this case, I'm just going to give back a new label uh, that says that it can't read the pixels. Otherwise, I'm going to, if I match a sum, and PR will be bound to the name for the pixel reader. What I want to wind up doing in the end is making a new image that will be set up around that. Now, just to show that this works, so let's see what we can do with a pixel reader here. A pixel reader has methods in it that get pixels. And now these are, we're not going to deal with those. They're a little bit more complex because they deal with pixel formats and whatnot. We're mainly going to focus on the two simpler ones. There is one that returns an integer, which gets the ARGB. It turns out that you can take a color and nicely compress it into 32 bits. This is what most graphical displays use. It uses one byte for a transparency, one byte for red, one byte for green, and one byte for blue, and it sticks them all together inside of an int. And so you can ask for that value out of the image. You can also ask for a color value as well, uh, which will just be put together from the ARGB. I just want to at least have a print statement that where we can see that this is working. In fact, I'll make two print statements. The first print line will do pr.getARGB of 00. zero. So it was the top left pixel in that image. And then because I think it will be interesting for comparison, let's print out the color that happens to be at that same pixel. And oh, I don't have a view. I now have node. Because it could be a label if this thing did not have the ability for us to read pixels. Clearly we have the ability to read pixels. And this is what it printed out. I kind of find that to be an interesting thing to, to print out. This I expected to be a weird number. Uh, the fact that the color doesn't print as anything very useful to us. How about we actually look at the components of that? Let's give this thing a name. And that needs to be val equals PR of that. And then print line. Let's see. C dot. Let's go look at our color type. I believe. So that's down here inside of paint. The color type. It actually has red, green, and blue are just fields inside of the color type. So I can do red c dot green and c dot blue okay and now if I run this it'll pop up the window and I get an amount of red an amount of green an amount of blue all of which are very high the red is a little bit lower that top left pixel happens to be part of the sky which in that picture is a fairly light bluish color and so the blue is dominant but they're all high because it's it's kind of close to a white color so we'll stop here uh, with this and we'll come back and we'll talk about how we can read in or how we can write out the pixels and display a modified image